All right, former Fed governor and man about town, Kevin Warsh, he writes in today's Wall Street Journal, interest rates are a sideshow in the Fed drama. Kevin Warsh, former Federal Reserve governor and now a distinguished uh, fellow at, I'm just going to, at the Hoover Institution. You're still teaching school out there, aren't you? Still Business teaching. School? It's extraordinary. The best line in this whole piece is, I just said to you, Offset, uh, the high priest of central bank dogma uh, might consider it blasphemy, but monetary policy has something to do with money. Now, we have charts up there to show a good picture of the so-called monetary base or the Fed's balance sheet. Let's put that chart up. There it is. It has just exploded in the last uh, 15, 20 years, and it's come down only a tiny bit. And that's the point you make in this article. It's not this obsession with the Fed funds rate. It's this, because the monetary policy is about money, and money is about inflation. That's exactly right, Larry. So uh, going into this meeting this week, you hear all the commentators, all the central bankers talking about, are they going to cut rates this week, or will it be September or November? But they're hiding the ball. The ball is really about the financial assets the central bank bought starting in 2008 crisis, mm -hmm. but it accelerated during the pandemic. And when it accelerated in 2021 and 2022, sure enough, the explosion of money, the explosion of the printing press, inflation went with it. Mm. Over the last three quarters or so, they started to bring down the balance sheet just a little bit, and sure enough, inflation fell. What worries me, of course, is that they're going to get out of that business. They've been signaling in the last several months the balance sheet runoff is slowing down. It'll stop soon. And as a result, I don't know what their theory of inflation is, but I think a better theory of inflation says they're going to have a problem if they keep at it. Well, that's the thing. Uh, and let's just put that chart up on the full screen again one more time so viewers can get a look at what Kevin Warsh is talking about. You can see the explosion from the financial meltdown when just before he came on the Federal Reserve, but what, 2006? That's, that's what right. you just told me. And the balance sheet was about $800 billion. It's like any bank has a balance sheet or the footings of a bank. This is the footings of the Federal Reserve, except there's it's all underwater. You can see the explosion, two explosions, one after the financial meltdown over mortgages, and then the second one over the pandemic. They didn't even race the second one, which they should have, because the pandemic's been over for quite some time. Now, your point is it makes you suspect, makes anybody who understands this suspect, that the lower inflation or disinflation may not be permanent. That's exactly right. Money is a dirty word around central bankers. Uh. It's a dirty word in the Harvard Economics Department. But good common sense says too much money ch chasing too few yes. goods is the key to inflation. You and I don't know exactly where the economy is going to be 12 months from now. There's elections. There's changes in policy. But we know if you keep the printing press going that this improvement we're seeing in inflation is going to disappear. The Fed doesn't seem so worried about inflation. That's why they last November promised there'd be all these interest rate cuts this year. American people are still worried, and for good reason. It's huge, a huge factor. The other thing you mentioned in there is um, Mr. Jay Powell, not to be personal, but on a policy basis, has actually encouraged the federal government of, for federal spending, massive federal spending, which shows no signs of abating. That's right. Those assets we were talking about, you know what those assets are, Larry? They're treasuries that the Secretary of Treasury are issuing. I don't believe over the last decade, especially over the last four years, mm. that Congress would have authorized this massive surge in spending in 2021 and 2022 if they thought it was going to be expensive. What kept the interest rates down? Because the Fed were buying those assets. Mm. It wasn't a willing buyer showing up in the Treasury market. It was a captive audience, the Federal Reserve. Yields are falling this year. Yields are lower than they otherwise stocks would be. Stocks are booming. And stocks are booming. So it doesn't tell you that anything's tight. I mean, if financial markets are that loose, right, lower rates uh, and, and higher share prices, it may not be the only thing, but it means, what, credit conditions are not tight. That's right. They keep saying that the uh, monetary policy is tight. It's restrictive. Mm. Look at Wall Street. It's hard to find that at all. SPACs are coming back under the market. Mm. Since Chairman Powell and his colleagues promised in December that they'd be cutting rates, there's been $12 trillion of U.S. stock market wealth mm. that camouflages a lot of sins. It's certainly a good way to get through the election season, but it's not a good way for long-term prosperity. What you want them to do? What I want them to do is focus on the balance sheet, yeah. focus on assets, yeah. shrink the balance sheet back down to size, let the private sector grow. Yeah, that's it.
Could have some tax cuts and deregulation. Could have limited government spending, too. That wouldn't be such a bad thing. We should try that. A deregulatory tax cut is exactly what this economy needs to sustain itself next year. Yeah, well said. Kevin Warsh, pretty good stuff. Former Fed governor, man about town, right? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Still teaching school. If those... Stanford kids would just listen to you, huh? We want them back in That's, the classroom, not, a, not in the I protest know, it's, lines. It's another segment, but, you know, you said it.